Hello everyone, my name is Cola and you're watching Classy Herbs. Alright, now first off, obviously, last week I mentioned that I was going to get my Tegu next week, which was last week, but I said that I was going to put up a video in the middle of the week when I got him, which I did not because I did not get my Tegu that week because, again, it was too hot, which really annoys me because it's he's, they hatched in, like, early June, and it's, um, it's September, it's almost September now, and I still haven't got him, and I know how fast baby Tegus grow, so he's not, um... I doubt he's still going to be a baby or baby baby when I get him, but so I'm kind of upset about that. But he will for sure be shipped on Monday, which is, you guys are watching this on Monday, so that's uh, it's being shipped today, and hopefully, hopefully, I will have the video up this week about when he arrives, so that's great. Alright, and secondly, this coming up weekend, there is going to be pretty much the only reptile expo that is, like, generally near me, like, at all. It's about an hour's drive from where I live, but that's the closest, uh, pretty much, uh, that's available. Any of the others are three hours or more away, and they aren't very often anyway. But this one is an uh, annual thing. It's just once a year, Labor Day weekend. It's going to be pretty awesome. It's not a very big reptile expo, but it pretty much just brings around all the local people who have reptiles in the area. It brings them all together, and we just kind of talk. And, you know, um, there's plenty of breeders. There's a few breeders, I guess, in the area. A lot of ball python stuff. So that's going to be pretty big. I'm going to be going to that. I've got a lot of snakes that I have planned out on getting then. So it should be pretty big next week pretty big video when I get those in and put into my rack and my rack will be full so that's pretty exciting news and uh, there will be definitely a big video about that and the week after that I'm planning on doing a full collection video so be prepared for that because it's probably going to be a pretty long one. Alright next guys Henry my green tree python just shed if you didn't know he's been going through his color change which is really cool so he's starting to lose his red color for his green color and he just shed and I was planning on once he shed that last time that I would move him into his original vivarium because now he's not exactly a baby anymore but more of changing it to adult so I'm figuring he can handle it. There's just one thing that I don't like and I think I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up but there's these little bugs in the dirt of his his vivarium here. Uh, the camera is not picking them up but you can see uh, those little bugs, they're little things moving around in the dirt and they've been there for a long time. I don't know how I originally noticed them, but there's a ton of them in the dirt. I don't think they're like parasite, like yeah, like mites or anything that would mess with them, but they just kind of annoy me that they're there and they're just living in the dirt. I'm pretty sure they're just little bugs that would just naturally occur anyway, but it does annoy me that they're there. But. I'm going to move him in here anyway, and uh, I hope that he likes it, so here we go. Alright, so I'm going to be videotaping moving him out of this tub and into his new cage, and this is going to be quite a hassle, so uh, I just want you to watch what I have to do here to get him out of his tub to start with, which is not very easy. As you see, he, can, he likes to bite. Um, the hardest part is just getting him off of his perch, because... You can't pull them off their perch, you have to let them come off onto your hand on their own time because they're very fragile snakes. There he comes. That was a lot easier than the last few times. Bring him into the light over here. And so you can see on his head there is very green now. He's greening up very nicely. And um, you can see along his back there also that he is also very green. It, it's, it's more speckled along his back there. You can see that. Alright, now I'm going to put him into his new cage. Start over here. Just stretch him out just to kind of see how long he is, guys. He's about a year old. This is what a yearling green tree python looks like. Just just for an example. You do need to be very delicate with these guys because their backs and everything is sort of so fragile. They're very delicate snakes, but they are very, very pretty snakes as you can see. Just very, very awesome. I'm going to begin taming mine down before too long. You can't really do that as babies because 
of just how delicate they are. Their spines are just like toothpicks. But then as, and naturally they, they just won't calm down as babies. But then as they become adults, they get a little, uh, they get a little bit more sturdy and you can hold them a little bit more. And they more naturally would tame down easier. So, and again, you can't just take him off of your hand. You left, you have to let him come off of your hand. There's no pulling with these guys. You let them do it. You let them do what they want. Just like this. I just let him come right off into his new cage. Alright, now hopefully you guys all enjoyed watching that, and there he is, he's up on the very, very top part of his cage here. I guess he's going down the back, oh, there's his head. Alright, but yeah, he's he's uh, doing good, you can see a little bit better now that his, his head is really green right there. Uh, I guess he just saw us, but yeah, he looks really good, and he's growing really quickly. He's actually eating rat pups now, so he's going to start growing uh, really fast, and he's hopefully he's going to grow up to be a big, healthy green tree python and that that's that'd be my goal for this guy because he's just more of a show animal like the dart frogs there and I just want him to look really good in this cage and I think he, he'll fill it really nicely if he doesn't get trapped behind his behind his wall there but yeah I think he's gonna enjoy this cage it's gonna give him a lot more room to move around a lot more things to do at night time when he's awake and doing what Dream Tree Pythons do at night, I guess. So, yeah, hopefully hopefully he likes it. If you have a baby Green Tree Python, I would definitely recommend starting them in a tub like this because they're nocturnal animals, they don't need UVB light, so it's really easy to take care of. It's a much more easier to do than in a tank because those tanks, as you know, we can see into them, which also means that they can see out at us. And the baby Green Tree Pythons are just so skittish, they're just so scared. Uh, they don't really know what's going on, and they're really small, they're really delicate, and they know that. And so they're very defensive little animals, they're very um, insecure, they don't really know what's going on, and they're just just gonna bite at everything and to make them feel a little more secure and happy in their home and that they'll definitely eat better is if you just move them into a tub and put it somewhere where there's not much activity in the room it's fairly low light so it's not real blinding them in the daytime and so, so such is what I did I got in a little tub I have no idea how many quarts it is but it's not that big and I got a heat mat underneath and he just rested up on this metal weight here and I drilled some holes in the side and I put these plastic clothes hangers through these holes here for perches. I put them all over it. You gotta need you need to put them at different heights, at different angles, at different about everything. So you can give them their choice of where to go. And I made the heat pad is about halfway. It's about halfway. So if he wants to get really warm, he can go down to one of the low perches right on top of the heat mat. They'll be warm there. If he feels like cooling off, he can come to the other side of the cage and he can go up real high and he can cool off and it's just pretty basic. I put in some fake plastic plants just to give them some more security. A little water bowl and uh, there was originally some paper towel on the bottom but that got really dirty because it's a huge hassle to clean this thing out. You see it's very stressful on them to, to get taken out of their cage and being messed with. He probably won't eat for a week or two now after that but that's uh, that's that's how I, I raised him and he did really good in there. He's in there for about a year and now that he's more of a sub-adult he's moved into his permanent home where he can live the rest of his life hopefully but he did really well in here that makes it just feel so more secure it's still kind of clear but that just allows a little bit of light in it but it's blurry and the way he, he's in the corner of a room and there's you know it's it makes it feel a lot more secure than in a big glass cage where everyone just comes around and looks at him and it's a pretty pretty main activity area so that's that's just my point of view on that for baby green tree pythons just for their personality and the nature of them. The guy that's cleaning the day today and I everyone who's never seen a snake before comes over to my house, they always like ask what snake poop looks like, like they have no idea what it'll look like or something like it looks like something out of this world, but it basically just looks like snake poop. 
right there. That's that's what it looks like. They do that about once a month. They're usually they do they poop and they pee when they shed. So that's you know every so often. And the difference between the big brown thing is their poop and that more greenish thing now. It was white when she released herself, but um, that's actually their pee. They don't pee liquid, they pee solid, that's called urate. They're just basically conserving water, so that's a pretty smart uh, evolution point for them. They don't waste any water in their pee, it's solid. Alright, so update on my little Dinker Ball Python project coming along here. She's actually kind of going into shed, so she's not the prettiest right now. But you can still see she's definitely orange, and she's got that really cool banded pattern. I got her at about 50 grams, and now she's 105 grams, so in about a week and a half, she's actually doubled in weight for me. But if you guys want to know, just a comparison, this is my pinstripe ball python. She's 1,700 grams at just a year old. You guys believe that, but she is, yeah, almost 1,800 grams. Um, just just about a year old compared to just a little baby ball python there. She's just mammoth. It's insane. She's that's the one of the upsides of breeding your own rats, guys. If you ever wanted to get into it, is because you know rats are like five dollars a piece at most pet stores for food, and that can get pretty expensive if you have a few ball pythons like me. And you don't really want to go and spend that three times a week, which is, uh, she gets fed about three times a week. And this is what the results can be if you breed your own, because then it's pretty much free. All you have to do is pay for food. You breed enough rats and mice, they pay for their own food and everything from the extras you get to sell off. So it's basically a win-win deal. The only thing is, you just have to clean the cages, and I, I honestly kind of enjoy doing that. But just a size comparison of these two it's just insane that in one year that little thing can grow into this and by the way she's eating she probably will because she's eating three times a week uh, rat pups already so it's uh, pretty pretty awesome this is a pinstripe ball python if I didn't mention this and this is my little linker ball python Abby this is Carmen the pinstripe by the way she's gonna be breeding this year hopefully gonna get a nice big clutch from her more little guys just like these <laughs> Update on your Who's Your Mama this week. She's right here, actually, and she's hopefully by now pregnant. She's been in there with the males for a week, and hopefully by next week we'll be able to tell, and I'll have her out, and then when next week later she'll have her babies. So that's it's coming along. All right, so for your Pup of the Week this week is going to be a special one. I'm actually going to do this whole litter here of rats as your pup of the week and they're pretty special litter because what it's actually five litters being fostered by four moms which is pretty rare for me I don't like doing that but as I mentioned back a few videos ago I had that one rat that had that huge tumor and some of the babies in here are from her litter and that yes they have survived and obviously she couldn't take care of them because of her tumor and because I put her down but that she had her babies at the same time all these other four moms had theirs and so I just threw them all together because it would have just been easier to do it like this. Sadly though, four moms taking care of five litters of rats is not an easy thing to do and quite a few of them have died and that's not good but quite a few of them have lived. As you can see there's probably over 20 baby rats still in here and they're just starting to eat food on their own. They're a lot behind, they're like probably about a month old so you can tell that they're pretty small rats for a uh, month old rats. So, But they are coming along, they're starting to eat and drink on their own now and that's that's good news. So that's been your pup of the week or litter of the week, whatever you want to call it.